This is very much in my heart and in my mind, and I wish I could go around the country speaking about, speaking to you, speaking to other people, as I speak to you this afternoon. What I hope to do is to give you some greater insight into what's going on in our health service, or what has gone on with it. And it reflects a lot of your concerns, in fact, is, is, as UKIP. That's the fact of it. Um, it's a rather sickly story, really. This is, that's the title of the, um, of the um, talk. And I added last night or the night before, and what has gone on before. And that is very important indeed. Uh, and you notice the Privy Council a bit. Next slide, Marilyn. Now what I, I put this slide up for is to emphasize the fact that a lot of health matters are communal. They're not people taking um, 10 quid in their back pocket to the local bupa man to sort out. And this is one good example. I'm sure that these go back in history a long way, no, back, n no doubt back to, to times of the Greeks and perhaps the Babylonians. But uh, 19, uh, 1854, a big cholera epidemic as people flooded in to London and a Dr. John Snow who obviously had a brain and a microscope, he didn't believe in the miasma theory of infection, he examined the stool fluid under the microscope, he didn't actually see the vibrio, the cholera vibrio, but he gathered it was a bacterium of sorts and the local council uh, with him decided to remove the pump handle. Now the epidemic was already in fact uh, reached its peak and was over the peak so it may not have been crucial but 600 people died in the Soho area and it was an excellent demonstration of people using their nous, their intelligence and then taking concerted action which is to remove the source of the infected water from the well beneath the pump. Uh, concerted action for public good, I tried to, I tried to encapsulate it in that way, I, I have done so. Next slide. Now this is the father of orthopedic surgery I'm talking about now and he really was a remarkable man a wonderful man really and I think he's a, one, a sort of fellow we should be remembering now in this era of the third rate and where there is very little lack of leadership the um, Manchester, Manchester ship good anyway you'll see it, 1988 um, 20,000 workers and you can see them down there with little uh, they've got steam shovels and barriers and things like that next one The first comprehensive accident service, and I suspect it was in the world. Um, the canal was divided into three sections, and there was a hospital for each section. And he had medical personnel trained in fracture management. It wasn't some ad hoc nonsense. Uh, hospitals linked by a railway, and uh, they would phone him up on the telegraph and get him along if they had a severely injured worker to deal with. And you'll see in the bottom that he personally managed 3,000 cases. And in this systematic way, because he'd organized it and he used his brain, he in fact finished this exercise knowing much more about fracture treatment. So th the general knowledge in our specialty was enlarged by his thoughtfulness in what he did there. Uh, he set up, you may know the hospital, the Sir Robert Jones and Agnes Hunt. She was a nurse. Hospital in Shropshire. Oswestry. Next one. Now, a different sort of personality and human being, 
who I think was less constructive, um, you see that at university she was influenced by Friedrich, Friedrich von Hayek. Interestingly, actually, his son was a bacteriologist at Torbay Hospital with me. Uh, and then she was influenced later on by Milton Friedman. Who knows Milton Friedman? He was about five or six. He has had a crucial influence on the Western world. Remember Alan Walters, a rather dried up man, he used to come on television quite a bit. Never heard of him, don't see him now. And he was the chief economic advisor. Next slide. Now the dogma was the internal market. That was one aspect of it. Um, there may, there more, there's more to it than that. Um, but it arose from this free market um, uh, idea. And in 1989, they published a, she published, or they published, a paper, a white paper probably, called Working for Patients. Well, I'd question that. There's some irony in that. I found in, I became aware of it, and I stood up against it almost. Uh, it was a fairly lonely exercise. And I was quite quickly aware that there were some doctors who were in the fifth column who were pushing this along very nicely at Torbay. That is not um, paranoia. That happened. And I can see that. But when, now I'll just tell you the story quickly. A senior, the um, manager for the Southwest Regional Board, who was a nurse actually, or had been a nurse, an unpleasant individual, uh, she came down to speak. She had all the Department of Health slides, all in blue, to promote this idea. And I'd studied it, and we had a very good little debate at Torbay Hospital. A fellow from the BMA and a fellow from the King's Fund came down, and I questioned her. This is what goes on. She gave her talk, and I stood up, Miss Hawkins, remember her name now? I said, Miss Hawkins, the present cost of um, administration in the NHS budget is about 5%, is it not? Yes. I said, is it not likely that, the, uh, that this um, plan will increase the cost of administration by, say, up to 8 or 9%? swept aside, 7%, she said. And I then asked another question, and my, the medical chairman, the gynecologist now dead, said, sit down. So there were about 60 or 70 consultants there. And I, as a middle-aged, very active consultant in orthopedics and trauma, was asked to sit down. This is the intellectual, this is the moral uh, atmosphere that is that in fact obtains in our country too often you're not allowed to say your piece of all the people I knew most about it because I'd bothered to read it up and go to the meetings about it doesn't that sadden you yeah. it was very shocking actually for me I felt it, it still lasts in me the feeling of being told to sit down um, so Thatcher was determined to roll back the state that was the, that was the, 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 the slogan and the Centre for Policy Studies she'd set up with Sir Keith Joseph had such blind policies in its guts. The untried, untested internal market was introduced. Next slide. This is sort of going back a little bit. Um, it was based on the Kaiser Permanente plan. That's a steel, a steel making magnet, uh, Kaiser, Kaiser Permanente. And uh, it's still running, actually, but it's a very selected audience. There are people who are fairly well off, who pay in rather like Bupa, and they have their own medical centers. They do not deal with the indigent, the poor people. Um, and you will see, in fact, if you go on reading that down, that's why I fought it. I thought it was the thin end of the wedge for the destru destruction of the NHS. And this was a killing. This was a, there was another thing, too, not on the slide. What it depended on, this competition, if you had two hospitals, Bournemouth, is there a Boscombe? There are two hospitals, there, aren't there? Aren't there? Uh, Only one now, is it? Or pools there, all right? But the um, commissioning body, which is just being set up on the 1st of April, 
they in fact will ask they've hit replacements from there and from Poole and say Bournemouth get them, get them all, the big contract. Poole goes to the wall in about a year or two and this is happening in America under this scheme. So hospitals are becoming shells. I'm not sure how many in fact did that way but that's, it relied on that, it relied on failure. And um, but what was also telling that this man from the King's Fund told me, uh, Mr. Best, was they, they had not established the cost of administering it. So here's this magic from America, and they do not know what it's going to cost to run it. How about that? Next slide. And they didn't know, our lot didn't know either. So it's a very powerful think tank, as you know. There are about three or four thousand think tanks in America. Think, not much thinking. A lot of it's dogma, you know, being driven by some sort of uh, almost visceral urge. In fact, quite often. And as you wish to see, as, you, as we shall see later on, as I say, if you want to ruin the NHS, ask the Yanks. It's about the worst health system in the world. Now, the cost of admin was five or six percent. Not always easy to find these things, but that's what they reckoned. And it added in that first year, no one knows this, you ask the population of Britain, what did Thatcher's internal market do for our NHS? No one will know that it in fact doubled the cost of administration. But I knew it would, but I was told to sit down. And I was just one tiny voice. But think of the waste in that. And I say, you could have done a third of a million hip replacements with that money if that's what you wanted to do. So posts, paper, and computer screens proliferated. And I can see now in the annex where they used to look after fever patients in Torbay, I could see a whole corridor fill full of um, computer monitors, redundant after some years, because they introduced this system called PAS, where the nurses had to put in whether people had a bowel motion or a cotton wool swab. All absolute nonsense. Next slide. So. We have the motivation, that's roll back the state, private, is it? Believing capital only, and of course, there's mixtures, and mixtures are sensible usually. Monetarism, globalization, that's a very big factor, and uh, roll back the state. Self-reliance, that was emphasized, I'm all for that. The profit motive driving individual energy and in, in, in ingenuity, that was also uh, promoted, and I don't think we can dispute that, wouldn't want to. Private good, public bad. And the dogma again, so we had the gas, telephones, electricity, and eventually the railways. And you know how successful that has been when you have monopolies running the whole show, and then you split up the wheels from the, um, the track, you know, which was in fact, they had to do that, the Tory government, the Major's government, because of some competition thing with the EU, I didn't remember. But we have that arrangement with us, the cohesion. So you've got legions of people claiming money back from network rail because the train has been stopped by snow or whatever. People arguing to ad nauseum about these things. So what I want to think about now, you remember Macmillan, in fact, stood against it and talked about selling the family silver. Um, look, we must think of the intentions. So when these people set about things, you have to say, what are they doing? What is their intention? Is it a good intention? Do they want to run the service better? Or do they want to run it down or make it so complicated it can't run at all? Next slide. Uh, well, there's a nice chap. This fellow, I think of all human beings, I loathe oh, yeah. in my guts. And I don't quite know. I actually send it to my articles. Yeah. This was in Canada with Stronach who has quite close connections with Tel Aviv. And there he was, it's the most high definition picture you'll see of this creature. Uh, he should be in a cold jail on a cold island in Terreira del Fuego. Next one.
They had exactly the same policies. They are, um, and I'm sure you might like to agree with this, they are um, like peas in a pod, really. Um, I hope I haven't dis uh, worried that lady too much. That was one of the little tricks, choice. You see, all sorts of little things, you see, choice. That sounds good, you see, oh, you can choose your GP. Choose your surgeon, choose this, choose that. In fact, I think choice was, there was a bit of extra choice, and I'll to come to that. Uh, we had these STCs built by the state. There was one in Plymouth, about 30 miles down the road from us. I had to deal with two of the complications from there. Their infection rate in the first year from hips was 4%. And a, an infected hip, 0.1% is a disaster, I can tell you. It's a terrible thing to have around your neck as a patient. But that's what the infection rate was. And they had a surgeon from Sweden, one from Germany. One. There was no team. There was no speed of core. They were sort of mechanics, you know, brought in. In fact, much less than mechanics, really. Thinking of Alan now. So spending was much increased. In fact, it, it shot up. Uh, waiting lists were slashed, no question about that. Uh, there, it was often against the sign of clinical priority if you had 2,000 bunions, although it's often an unnecessary operation, I can tell you that. Um, the bunions would be done because the, the waiting list was longer for them. Um, <clears throat> now this is very interesting, actually, this. If you could study this, what, a younger colleague who I was on the appointment board for, who joined us at Torbay, they were seeing that five patients were listed by a Greek actually, but he wasn't, he didn't have a higher qualification. And he always, I knew this, he listed people for arthroscopy, that's the telescope bit in the knee, quite often. So there's a long list built up, so ah, oh, we must have a waiting list initiative. So this consultant who we appointed did five cases that Saturday morning. Each of the five knees was normal, whereas if you are you know, a fully qualified surgeon and conscientious and seen a lot, you know from the story of what knee you need to look inside or not. And a lot of them, in fact, say go off and ride a bike for a bit and see how it gets on, and many get better. But five were done and they were normal knees. Cost of that for the staff, he got £300 per patient. And the fact is that sometimes people have ill effects from arthroscopy. And that president of the CBI, I forget his name now, married to that, not really. Uh, a lady something reigns in the in the marsh arabs he died of a proembolus following arthroscopy can happen so you don't operate on people without good reason but that's what it was all about you see figures to push them through and to make it look good for new labor and for mr blair um yes pfi they pushed that as well that was jam not tomorrow but jam today jam today um, so they built courthouses, schools, and lots of hospitals. And now, I think somewhere I put it down, lead boots. The PFI is lead boots. The Lewisham Hospital you've heard about, they're having to sell off the A&E department or close it because of PFI down, PFI down the road. The beds in Devon that I've been fighting for with others, at Ashburton and uh, Bravi Hospital, they, are try they want that, those beds to be put into the PFI hospital in, in uh, Newton Abbott, which is costing 2.4 million per year annual charge. That's a mortgage. It's costing about three times more than if they'd have used the money from the treasury to build a hospital. Next one. Now, these are the, this is a powerhouse in this system. It's not surgeons or doctors or people like myself who spent 11 years training from the time we left medical school to the time I became a consultant. These are people who work for McKinsey's and Coopers, and they're in it like Death Watch Beetle. They're all over the shop. And um, this chap in the middle, Bennett, I think, I think it's his, I'm not sure whether he's still there, I don't know. This, was a, this talk was given in February last year to the um, Exeter University Students Labour Club. Very good lot of young people, actually. It was very, Bradshaw was a previous Minister of Health, being very smooth towards me. But these are the people, and you see the thing, what, see, see what goes on. This chap goes to, is invited to New York. Uh, and gets uh, 6,000 quid's worth of five-star hotel treatment or heavy time. And this is part of our health service. 
But these people run the show. Monitor will be telling the commissioning groups that they're setting up, which will become fully active on the 1st of April, they will be telling them what to do and whether to go to private providers or what have you. But we'll get on to that. Next one. Next one. <clears throat> now this is a little bit, this is a bit of personal bitterness as well. Um, this, is a, this is an example of the calibre and, and the principle which we find in the House of Commons. You know all about the expenses thing actually. Well, this is a bit of it actually really. But this is Mark Simmons, very smooth, very smooth. And you see that he declared in his Register of Members' interests uh, 12,500 quid for advising Circle Health. It's a growing health, private health company. They're running Huntington Hospital now and they have some private hospitals as well. Big funding from venture capitalists behind them. And that's what he declared. Anyway, I looked into this. My sister helps me in all, all this. She's wonderful, in fact, in researching things. So, as I said, he did not declare the bribe, it is a bribe, of £1,250 per hour uh, when he was discussing the health bill in the House of Commons. So I wrote to John Lyon, the, the parliamentary commissioner, although he seemed rather toothless chap, although you can't find it very easily, and I didn't know it from correspondence to me from, Sir John, from John Lyon, there's in fact a large thing on the internet where it was followed along and Lyon really had to tie him down. And he in fact eventually had to apologise. Six words in the House, six words. But I pointed out to John Lyon what does a care worker think when she sees him getting 1,252 power? Isn't it nauseous? <laughs> he knows nothing about health anyway. What he's doing, you see, he's on the inside track. He knows what they're thinking and what they're saying in the tea room, the House of Commons, and in the clubs. That's what he's saying. That's why he's there for Circle Health. Next one. The World Bank, IMF, GATS, that sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it, really? European thing, isn't it, GATS? Um, to which was added, or you can add, the EU. Do you know the Bolkestein Directive? That's if you, supposing like the Latvian person who's served us lunch today, if the Latvian comes back over here, if she's come over here, she can be paid here the wage it should be paid in Latvia. That's the Bolkestein Directive. So it's a very good way of driving down the wages throughout the European Union. It's the race to the bottom. We'll need to care for more and more people. The aged, the epidemic of dementia, they talk about two million by, night by 2030. The cause for that, must be a cause for that, uh, and obesity. Will the cherry pickers, will Circle Health be looking after the dementia people? Not on your nelly. Not on your nelly. So that's something to consider. And yes, is it benevolent or does it arise, this is what is, it, what is the motivation, or does it arise from the monetarist belief that the dominant force in human society is profit? Well, I, although I had a successful private practice and did well in that, my job was in the health service, that's my first job, and I know very well that the, that the best things in human, in society, arise from concern for others. Next slide. That that hasn't that hasn't been adapted. That slide isn't. There's a type 
typographical error there. There was no electoral mandate for this massive upheaval which we're going through now, none at all. They didn't say in, uh, two, when was the last election? 2010, wasn't it? Or 11? 11. 10, wasn't it? 10. May 10, wasn't it? There was nothing said about any health bill. But you can guarantee that the elements of it were all in place and the Death Watch Beatles have been busy for years setting it up. Um, the strategy is to confuse with myriad detail, to divide and to demoralize. And I think the health service staff are probably, if I know, they are demoralized now to generalize. Not, 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 not everybody, but a lot of people are fearful of their jobs and they are not particularly proud of their service when they need to be. And they are, usually. Um, and the other thing is that they have created, they've constructed a fait accompli uh, to achieve feelings of resignation. Very important in public manipulation, actually, is that. Next one. Um, just, I'll just pick out, I can't see, I, from standing here, I can't read the screen very easily, but um, it is an elemental struggle between rabid capital and common good, where the fit care for the sick. The Chicago School acolytes would rejoice in seeing the socialist, this socialist success story dismantled as Lansley has planned. They want that. This is the last good example, I know it's not perfect, of a socialist or of the common good. Leave the socialist bit out of it. But they would want to see it. They would put the flags up. They'd relish it. They want that because they want to show that it's all failed. And then just one little thing. Um, US construction worker on Panorama uh, in a tent village where the homeless were being housed. He had a hernia. Alan was speaking earlier on. Where's Alan? You were. He was speaking earlier on about the food banks growing in this country. Uh, he had a hernia and was encouraged to visit a local hospital with a view to its repair. £20,000 was the answer. $20,000. Almost pounds now, isn't it? Um, no work, no money were his words. And know that 50 million people, the poorest of the USA, cannot afford insurance between 15... And mind you, some people say, well, so what? That's some people say that. Uh, between 15 and 20 percent of GDP is spent in the USA on medical services, bureaucracy and the insurance industry, which in fact is up to massive fiddles with the state um, and the, or the, uh, the, 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 yes, the federal state. And the insured are over-medicalized, of course. That is what is planned here. Next one. Uh, you see the quote from Mr. Blair. See that one? I thought it was a very good one. There are hundreds of quotes of Blair on the internet, but I thought he was very convincing on that first one. And um, this is interesting, you see, with Mr. Cameron. He died, um, was it, Ca I forget his name actually now, Ian. but uh, Ian, who died, you know, who had cerebral palsy. And, um, but the last words, the, the ones that I'm pointing to, he said, well, Blair said, education, education, education. I can do it in three letters, N, H, S. Convincing, isn't it? Next one.
Now here's a chap from the west of here, Somerset, Mr. Letwin. Um, now this is only this is not a this is not a formal quotation. Um, this is um, group, six contractors who met him. And he encouraged them to get involved in the PFI in Dorchester. It doesn't quite ring because the only place I know in Dorchester is the hospital of that sort, which has been built for longer than that. But uh, you will see that in fact he said within five years of a conservative election victory the NHS will not exist anymore. So his intentions, his intentions were plain. If the quotation is correct, I have to say that. I wasn't there. This is hearsay, really. Next one. And then this discussion on Radio 4, I'd skip some of the thing actually, but it's the people who, it's the Death Watch Beatles again. It's Matthew Taylor who was in Blair's policy unit in, the, um, in Downing Street. They're all, they're all there, you see. Get the, who's in charge doesn't matter very much. The, 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 the Beatles are still there working away. Eamon Butler and this fellow Tim Evans, a bit more about him later. And um, at the end of the interview, Butler replied, it's been 20 years in the planning, planning, do you see? I think they'll do it, in other words, take the health service down. So he's indicating that it's not a, like that, it just happened. He'd been at it for a long time. Next one. onion rings and um, you'll see in fact that he was um, director general of the center for the new Europe try um, googling that um, also see in fact that he was um, he he was the executive director for public affairs of this independent healthcare association so here is a chap who's been central in health service strategy who's been very much involved with the private providers for a long time and down the bottom he's there at Brams Hill talking to the police about economics and politics of the future what's he talking to the coppers about this for it is a, it is a, you begin to wonder don't you next one That's true. But Hitler knew that people were used to little lies and they tolerated little lies, but they'd never believe a big lie was a lie. Do you see? And that's one thing. Muggridge, I hadn't seen that quotation before, but it's true. People, if they have an inbuilt prejudice, they feed that rather than thinking afresh. And then that's highly relevant because this change in our health service, which is taking place now, I couldn't be speaking at a more appropriate time because it, it is going up like this is a Richter scale 10 change in the health service happening now so you've invited me at a good time really except I find a rather difficult time uh, but this is a law that's being passed a bill and when you think why does it need to be a bill why is it a bill I know why it's a bill because they can in fact kick us all and make sure we do it do you see what I mean next one Yes, reform, I object to the word reform, it's always used in the wrong context. Um, and modernization too. I wrote an article for the Western Morning News. There's an assistant editor there who um, I met before actually, and he's rather, he's rather nice. My right now to is, yes, feel free. I've done it before. And at the end, towards the end, I put this, to heal is a calling and caring for the sick is a sacred human privilege and duty. And I feel that race, I'm not religious, 
at all. But uh, as having been, having looked after a lot of people in my time, I feel that very strongly indeed actually, and all this is diminished by the way these people speak about a health service and the way the Death Watch Beatles get busy. Do you see? They're dealing with, they've got economic theory and stuff that's inside them. We have to run it, obviously, efficiently, and, not with, and with cost very much in our concerns, as we did when I was a young doctor and young surgeon. This is the essence. Stop the political football. And I've said it for 20 years, and the one or two people agree with me, but I, can, I knew if I went out publicly and nationally, I wouldn't get anywhere. But the thing is, it, we should have the national executive, well-chosen, decent people, not uh, uh, place people, and uh, they should say, right, Bournemouth, that's um, 70 million quid, get on with it, and you do your best, all right? But instead, in fact, it's the Minister of Health you see, and political ideology uh, being pushed all the time, actually. And what we should do as a health service is report to the health committee of the, of the, of the Commons uh, via the national executive. And we say what we've done, what you could do better, what money we might, you know, what, what more money would help in, or whatever. But that's what it, it should not be a political football, which it is at the moment. Next one, very much so. That was the final words of my piece in the, uh, in the um, uh, Western Morning News. When we lift up the sick and weary, everyone is lifted up. And that is true. If you hear people saying how auntie had to go in for her fractured hip or whatever, and they say they were marvelous, you know, they really were, you know, they gave us a cup of tea and went in and they told her how sick she was. And you can see everyone is lift, they are lifted up. At the moment, you're, being, you're hearing on the radio and on television every day by the BBC, and it's concerted, it's orchestrated, it's constructive, you're hearing how badly we're doing. Well, OK, we're not doing very well in some hospitals, but you'll hear about the chap that was so dehydrated he took the, the, the water from the vase. Well, I thought flower vases were, in fact, verboten on hospital wards because of... of um, uh, I just think of the bug actually, Pseudomonas pysonia. Anyway, but you see how what happens, that piece of propaganda, just like old, um, old Adolf would like, did it happen? I don't know. I'm not going to question that. But you have to, you have to think about these things. 1,200 people died at Stafford. Was it 1,200 people died as a direct result of neglect? Obviously there was terrible things going on there. But a lot of it was being, they were being they were having weights put on their backs, the people who were on the coal face. And they had these damnable people like uh, Sir What's Name Nicholson, who are trying to get rid of now, who's head honcho of the health service, who in fact heard nothing wrong going on there. Do you see? But you're hearing that from the BBC because the BBC know that the bill has to go, well, it's gone through. They want to see it instituted and they want to see our health service uh, by competition with private companies destroyed. And the BBC is part of that. Next one. Do you know, have you heard about this film? Well, Ken Loach, um, who's in the F wing, okay. Well, I don't care what he is, actually, but I think he's a de decent man. But he's made a film which is apparently very good. I haven't seen it yet. But it's on at our, tomorrow at our picture house in, um, in Exeter. So we're going to go there on the way home, I hope. Um, but there's one in the nearest one for you. I'm afraid it's Southampton. But what he's done, he's got lots of stills and, and films, put them together, and that's, what his, that's how it's encapsulated in the um, publicity material. Generosity, mutual support, and cooperation were the watchwords of the age, of the for, of 45, when people had enough of war, they'd fought like hell, women had done all sorts of things to sacrifice, uh, sacrifice things to keep things ticking, and they wanted some relief and to look after things properly. It is time to remember the determination of those who were intent on building a better world. Next one. Be outraged. Uh, I've come to help inform you. Some of this stuff will have been new to, I hope, about what's been going on in the background. Um, 
the three billion pounds. Yes, Mr. Cameron said it will cost three billion pounds to institute this reform. How does he know? Not an idea. Thatcher had no idea. It added five or six percent at least the internal market thing. What is happening on the 1st of April, very appropriate day, mind you, is catastrophic in my view. And they're still deciding, and I'd be right in the House of Lords, other people have as well, we've been told to do these things, because they're still using words, Lord Howe particularly, to make it sound as if they won't allow private competition. But they will. And they're, in fact, they're doing it on three things already. Hearing aids for one, or adult hearing, they call it. So what will happen is that, um, and I've been writing to the chairman, the GP of our local one in, um, in Torbay in South Devon, but he's hoping that, it won't, that they'll keep maintain NHS services and there'll be no privateers or you know, private um, uh, firms involved. Well, he's hoping. There's no more than that. And in fact, the fact you have to see it, the drive is to get competition going and to pull the system down. Not immediately, it will take some time. What I'm hoping, I'll say this, will cost, it is the exocid, that's what it is, it's the, it is the Richter uh, 10. It may fail, fail in chaos, people are uh, uh, predicting that. Have you heard that the GPs, they've analysed the, B, the BMJ, and a third of all the GPs on these commissioning bodies have got private health service interests. Did you hear that? Did you hear it? No? So it's about a third. And I knew that. I knew it from my local one in South Devon. So I found that they were, had their own company. And I raised that about two months ago with our group finding these beds. But if that is the case, they'll be in trouble. And in fact, there's quite a lot of law which will in fact pull them up. Because they talk of imprisonment, if they, because they're companies now, these set up these CCGs, some of them are, and uh, if they don't uh, toe the line, they may find, in fact, that there's a chap with a blue uniform on the door. Area. Next one. They end. <laughs> <laughs>